Hello guys and welcome to our session on Node.js today. So last class we had done pretty simple and basic concepts on Node.js. So today also we'll be dealing with some simple concepts of Node.js. Then we'll be moving on to Web3.js and I will tell you what Web3.js is and how actually it connects with a blockchain and get some and fetches some data with the blockchain. So we'll we'll learn much more about that in uh, in this session further on. So yeah, let us start off with our today's session. So as you all know that we have we had uh, created a folder called Node.js and inside that Node.js, just a simple app, uh, app.js is the another uh, JavaScript file name that we have used. And in the CMD, we have loaded on to the same directory. And to execute any like uh, JavaScript Node.js command, it is node space uh, file name dot js. So that is the command. So yesterday we saw, uh, I mean, in the last session, we just saw some concepts basically on like uh, the basic syntax and requiring packages from another module as well as uh, some uh, like pre-built modules like operating system as well as uh, uh, like a simple file system. So today we'll be doing something with file system. So what is file system is nothing but a library or the package that is that is pre-built with Node.js. So this file system helps us to see what are all the direct, what are all the files that are there in the particular folder or we can navigate between different folders. So I've been telling you this, the conventional JavaScript was mainly used in web-based application, but this uh, Node.js will be useful for like directory based application as well as going through different files, opening files, handling all those files. So all those things can be done with uh, that is Node.js. So uh, starting off with, uh, so we'll just import the library. So I always told, tell you that use a constant to import the library. So the file, uh, the library name is called as file system. So that is called as fs. So put a semicolon to end the statement. So after that, what we do is uh, we will try to read files. So the function to read file files is I will store all the important, uh, like the contents of the file system in constant file. So that is my like constant which stores uh, data. So fs is the like the object uh, which I have taken. So this constant is storing all the functions of this uh, fs that is the file system. So fs dot read directory sync. So this is read directory sync command that is it, it will read the directory and fetch what are all the files that are there in our current directory. So to show that it is that for the same directory, you need to use dot and slash. So this, this is telling that we are looking for the current directory or the existing directory wherever this app.js is there. So it will show all the files that are there in app.directory. So we'll just use console.log. So console.log, if I type in files, this gives me information about all the details about what are all the files are there in my particular uh, folder. So which is my folder in the Node.js folder. What files should I have? I need to have two files that is app.js and app2.js. To run, this is just printing out all those information. So we'll just try to run that. That is use the command node space app.js. So that is the command. So this is telling me, this is giving me a list and telling me that there are two files that is one is app.js and the other one is called as app2.js. So what is this app and app.js and app2.js are nothing but the files inside our primary directory. So that is what is being happening. So one more thing I wanted to tell you is I told you that JavaScript has two types of operations. One is basically synchronous operation and the other one is called as asynchronous operation. So what is this asynchronous nature or asynchronous nature of JavaScript I told you. So if we, I, I told you the situation of a waiter uh, dealing with multiple customers in a hotel. So if if it is asynchronous, so he doesn't wait uh, for the food to come in and serve the one customer. He always go to multiple customers, gets the order and places it them in the kitchen. And whenever the order is complete, he gives it to them. So there are two ways you can read directories in case of uh, like file system. So you can use it in a synchronous way where Till this file is getting retrieved, it will not perform any other function. So if you want to do it in an asynchronous way, there is also a function to do it in an asynchronous way. So to read it in an asynchronous way, it is pretty simple. So what we'll do is, uh, 
Okay, so to read it in an asynchronous way, it is fs dot read directory is the function. So it is quite different, but the output is same. But I am telling you to use uh, asynchronous functions because it is utilizing the features of Node.js. So that is what it is helping at, helping us out in. So to read any file or directory, you need to use that that is the current directory is dot slash. So this is telling us it is the current directory which we want to know what are all the files are there in this current directory. Then it is quite different from the other uh, like uh, like the read uh, read directory sync because it is asking for a function here. So the second parameter is a function. So the first parameter of this uh, function is like the directory. The second one is a function. So the uh, it takes in a function a function as input. So the function will store two things. One is called as the error and files. So I will store this as error. So that is fine. Error and files. So then, so the function is. I mean the uh, the function is not yet ended still. So I need to write something in this function. So what is the thing that I will I will write in this function is? Okay. So if error is there. No. If error. If there is some error. Err. So if that error is there in this particular i mean if there is any problem in the directory if it can't read anything in the directory so i will write it as console.log error comma err so it will print out what is the error else what it will do is else it should print me the result that is the result by which will be the files okay if i close this and then i need to see what is what needs to be closed okay then i need to close this see the major difference here is in case of asynchronous Function that is the read directory asynchronous function. In synchronous, it was pretty simple. You you would use the asynchronous function and you would just mention the which directory and you can uh, print out the information. But in asynchronous function, you are giving the directory and the other input is a function. So you can define this function anywhere outside and call that function name here also. But what I have done is I have defined the function here itself. So this entire thing is getting closed here. So that is what is happening. So this function is taking two things. One is the directory and other function. So that other function I have defined within this particular function. So I am telling that it will take in two values. That is one error and the other one is the files. So if there is an error, it is console dot log. It will uh, it will print out what is the error. If there is no error, it will print out what is the file directory that I need to print out. So this is the important part. So if you didn't understand. So it is basically telling that this is a whole different function. Okay, here I need to type in the whole function part. So I can define the function outside also. That is not a problem. What I have done is I have defined the function inside itself. So the major thing is this will take in two parts. One is the directory and the other one is the function. So okay, if it is a function, it should be like this. So instead of that, what I have done is I have declare the function here itself and also declare the conditions and the statements inside the functions also here itself so that is what is uh, being done now so this is one part this if statement is closed else statement and this function then i need to enter this curved braces and the whole part is closed so i will save this and i will try to run the same program so yes it is printing out result this statement because my Location is correct. I mean, directory is correct, so it is printing out the correct location, and it is printing out app dot js js and app two js are the two files. Now, what I will try to do is pretty simple. So, I will give a wrong directory. So, I will use a dollar symbol. So, I will give a wrong directory and save it and try to run this part. So, if I give a wrong directory, it is telling that it is it is printing out error because I have told that if there is an error, print out error. Then it is printing out whatever error is there. So it is telling that there is no particular after scanning also it is not finding any directory uh, named as dollar. So there is an error. So this is how you work with synchronous and asynchronous systems. So I already explained you what is synchronous and asynchronous and why uh, Node.js is better because it supports asynchronous. It doesn't 
wait for a particular process to get executed to go to the new process as soon as one uh, gets go, like as soon as one process initiated it can go to the other process and do some data uh, like uh, processing there there also so this was with the basic file system based uh, package so next one is we will go to another package called as events so what is this event or how does this event happen is like easy to understand so whenever in case of uh, okay let us consider a situation where you are logging into your facebook account whenever you log in into your facebook account what should happen so you will type your user id and you will type the password so after typing the password so if the if you have typed the wrong uh, password so you will get uh, you will get a notification that you have, you have typed the no, wrong password so each and every request in the web has an event triggered so if you type a wrong password it will it will trigger an event stating that you have entered a wrong password so after you have, you have logged in with the correct credentials you will go to the home page then also an event will be started so this event may get timed out after certain time that is also uh, like possible so event is nothing but whenever you do anything with requests so it will start an event and it will be monitoring what is happening in the entire program so that is what it is doing so event is like nothing but an uh, like a monitoring thing that happens inside a program so it will monitoring it will be monitoring what are all the things that are happening whether a new request is being sent or whether a new print statement new condition is being allowed so if anything happens like that what it will do is it will try to do take some actions against it so that is how it is uh, like used so events play a major role in node js so in blockchain applications as i told you if new block is trying to be added so another uh, if an event is being created of new block being added so it will trigger to all other uh, accounts of the blockchain and tell that uh, an event is being triggered so please take some sufficient action so that is how it is used in the field of blockchain also so to start with events it is pretty simple so the first part is you you use a constant i will call it as event emitter as a constant so event emitter is a constant what it will do is it will require events okay so it will require the events but one thing to note down here is this event dot emitter is not storing the functions here it is storing the entire class so event unlike like other uh, packages in node js this is a class so if you are fami if you are familiar with object oriented programming so there is one kind of uh, user defined data type called as class so what class does is it stores it is like uh, i'll give you a simple analogy so class contains different functions different variables that is that has certain characteristics for example if i take a class like animal so that has characteristics like uh, number of legs what is the height what is the weight all those things are characteristics so similarly an object is nothing but it is like a like subdivision of a class or a child of a class which is like different kinds of animal for example elephant is an animal uh, elephant is an object belonging to animal class which has the following features that is it has four legs it weighs around 1 or 2 tons it, it is height uh, its height is around 30, 20 to 30 feet that, that is like a basic example that you can give so here the major thing is a class is being uh, like and events is like a class so event emitter is the object that you are using so you need to create uh, like another object of this particular class so then you can use it anywhere else so how to create an object of this particular event emitter so this event emitter is actually a class which we are derive deriving from the events uh, like the package so how to create a new uh, object of this particular uh, like class i will name name this variable as emitter so that will take in new event emitter so this new is a keyword to create an object of this class event emitter so it is same like other packages but here it is not the function it is the class that we are uh, deriving into this constant event emitter once we uh, like derive a class we can't use the class directly we need to create some object so this emitter is this object of this event emitter class then what we'll try to do is pretty simple so 
ओके सो वॉट विल डू इज विल एमिट द पर्टिक्युलर इवेंट सो वॉट आई डू इज एमिटर डॉट एमिट I will tell that message sent. So I will save this, and if I try to run this, nothing is happening. So this emitter dot emit is nothing but it, whenever an event is triggered, so it will it will tell that message is being sent. So the main thing is our event is this message sent, but it is not reflecting anywhere. So How is that event created? So emit is nothing but uh, in a scientific term, it is like some, it is emitting something or it is throwing out something. So this is nothing but throwing out an event. So that event is nothing but the name of this event is message sent. But to listen to all those events, so what we need to do is we need to create an event listener. So for example, whenever an event, whenever an event is emitted here like this. we need to create an event listener which can listen to all the events being emitted and can take some actions against it for example uh what we'll do is how to create an em emitter listener is emitter or an event listener is emitter dot on is the function to create it so what we'll do is we will take this event that is message sent is that event so it will be trying to listen to this event called as message sent then after trying to listen to it it should do some action so that is why we need to create a function here so in this function what will happen is we need to tell something to happen that is console dot log okay wa well, message sent okay what will do is message received so one simple thing if you are not able to understand it is pretty simple so event is nothing but a package it it whenever whenever a request is being sent or whenever an event is being created so this listener always looks in for what is the uh, event that is created and tries to do some action when that event is being created so how this is working is pretty simple to understand so whenever uh, an event is being emitted uh, uh, like emitted or being created some listener needs to be there to listen to that particular event so what is the event that i have creating message sent is the event that i have created here but if this listener is there that is emitter dot on is the listener function so that is listening to this message dot sent so whenever it listens to this message dot sent that is whenever this emits here it will listen here so after listening it will try to print message received so that is the important thing happening and not one thing is if you give out or if you put this event i mean if you put this after the emit function or after the event is created it doesn't listen for example i will save this and try to run this so nothing is happening so the important thing is before the uh, event is created only you need to turn on the emitter or you should create this emitter or listener function so which will try to listen so since this emitter dot emit uh, like created an event called message sent so that is uh, listened by this listener which is emitter dot on so the the listener is listening to only one kind of event that is message sent so after it listens to this it will call a function called uh, it will call a function which will tell that message is received okay so then what i'll do is so it is printing out message is received so if i don't give emit any message here so i will just cut this part so if i don't emit any message even though the emitter is on it wasn't any i didn't save it okay i will now save it so even though the event is on it will not print anything so it will not print anything unless i emit some a message or event using this emitter dot emit so emit is a function which will create an event on is a function that will listen to the event so that is how it is happening so the next part is See in many cases, what happens is whenever you create an event, so some data also needs to be sent. So how to receive data is easy to understand. So you can also, whenever you create an event, you can tell that the event is being created and so and so date and so and so time. So how can I create that uh, like uh, message and also send that message whenever an event is being created? Is uh, first thing is I need to create an argument for this function called as arg. and i will also print this argument stating that the event is created at so and so time and the uh, date is also so and so time but 
where do i send this uh, data along with this um, like the event being created is i you need to use comma and there is an convention to use a javascript object notation so you might have you, you might be familiar with json so if you are not familiar with json it is simple whatever data type you use within curly braces and you have different data types so the value of this data types is uh, driven uh, by this colon so id is one data so 12 is that uh, like the information being stored then i have uh, like url so that is like www.google.com so this is the other data that is being stored whatever you write it within curly braces and all the data that you store is in json format so that is also called as javascript object notation so that is basically used for storing data what i will do is i will store two things one is date so date is nothing but uh, okay i what i'll use is 24042020 okay 2020 is my date along with that what i will do is i will even write another thing that is time so time is nothing but 10 pm okay see so these two things that i will uh, like add it along with the event that is being created so after creating this event so after creating this event so earlier what we need to, uh, what we did was whenever in, an event was created message dot send what it did was whenever it the listener found out that message dot sent event is being created so it gave us just the information but along with creating the event i am also telling that the date is this uh, 2404 and the time is 10 pm so it is emitter dot on is or the listener function is also listening to the data which is being sent along with this emitter dot emit uh the, and it is also printing out the data using console dot log so that is how it is happening so we'll just try to save this part yes so you can see guys uh this message received is the on function or the listener function so it printed message received along with this argument what is the argument the date and the time that i have mentioned in the emitter creation or that is nothing but an event creation uh, time so that event creation date and time is also printed along with the message received that is the listener functions output so this is the basic thing that we will be uh, dealing with when we are dealing with uh, emitters as well as any functions that is event creation function so i hope you have understood the basics of this event function so then we'll move on with the last function that we'll be de dealing with that is called as http function so what is this http function and how we'll be using this http based library is pretty simple so http is nothing but hypertext transfer protocol so whenever you are trying to transfer to some data or do some web based request and reply activities so whenever you want to like uh, talk to your servers or whenever you want to try to receive some data from the servers all you do is you will take an http request so what is this http request and how to use those http requests is simple to understand so we have a inbuilt library called http what i'll do is i'll create another that is uh constant called as http i will require the package what is the package that i need to require is http is the package that i need to require so after receiving this package http so what i'm going to do now is pretty simple uh first thing is i'll use constant server that is uh a constant so i will create a server so what is a server is nothing but a server is a remote computer which can take in request from other computers and also give out some replies also to that computer so you might have all heard of like different servers that are being used like everything that in the world which is, which is running on web based applications uses a server it is like a remote computer which stores data as well as whenever we ask the data it will retrieve it and whenever we send the data also it will store it so simple way to understand a server so what we'll try to do is we'll create a server so we'll create a local server so how to create a server is using create server command so this constant server is nothing but uh, having details of this function http.create server so now what we'll try to do is okay we'll use this function called as server.on server.on is the function so in this server.on function so we'll name it as connection
Okay, after uh, doing that connection part, so we'll name this server dot on as connection. Okay, guys, so this is nothing but the name of the connection. So whenever I turn the server on, I need to give give the name of this uh, like name given to the server. So that is named as connection. So after that, I need to write a function. So one thing is you can write functions in two ways. So you can use this short uh, shortcut operator called as equal to along with this arrow mark. to tell that that is also a function so you don't need to name it as function so you can use this shortcut uh, keys that is is equal to and this uh, greater than symbol so you need to mention the arguments that is similar to that in your function but it it works exactly as a function but you are just using short uh, shortcut operators to tell that this is the function and this arguments is the Uh, argument that is taken to the parameter of the function so then we are uh, like performing some operations that is which is inside the function is this so instead of writing function of arguments function args so instead of doing that we can use this shortcut operator that is args that is the arguments that is being taken in followed by your equal to symbol and your uh, greater than symbol so both are same okay so then what we'll try to do is so i've i've switched on the server so then after switching on the server what i need to do is okay this is not uh, i don't call this as an argument now i call this as a socket so what is the socket doing is important to understand or you might already know what is a web socket so each and every like uh web web based server or servers will have something called as sockets so sockets is similar to how you have your sockets in your switchboard so whenever you want to charge your laptop you will if you have multiple sockets on your switchboard so it is like uh simultaneously you can charge or you can use those five different sockets to obtain power using the uh using those five sockets so if you have one socket you can use you can power only one particular device or use one particular kind kind of electrical device so similarly the number of sockets in a server is telling you the number of simultaneous collections that you can make but sockets are also named because you can name the sockets at 1 2 3 4 5 so put uh, put the connections onto third socket is nothing but you are naming those particular sockets here also socket also has an address or a number which is telling that which socket number we are trying to connect so it is similar to your electrical socket where you have different uh, slots where you can charge or put in device here we have different slots where we can simultaneously access the server and get some details about that particular thing so here we are uh, like using socket so what we'll do is once we connect to the socket we'll print some information that is console dot log someone logged into the, uh, into the port so this socket is also uh, named in terms of port so it is also named in terms of port number so port number is telling you which is the number that particular connection is being made to so yeah after that i need to close this function that is use close this function and close this also okay so after that we need to mention which port we are using so we'll use server.listen so i will use the default port that is 3000 if you use 3001 also you can type in 3001 in the browser and it will work okay console.log what we'll try to do is we'll try to print out listening to port 3000 so what it will do is it will start the with the command called as console.log listening to port 3000 then we'll go to our browser and we'll connect to this 3000 port that is this socket so whenever we are trying to connect to this socket what will happen is it will try to print out that is someone logged into this port so it will print out in the console that someone logged into this port so that is what we are trying to do now so one thing is pretty clear so it is nothing but uh, we have created the it is nothing but we are using http library in http library we created a server so server is like the local server i turned on the server and named it as connection and i also assigned a particular socket that is taken as the like the input or that is the argument so when i connect to this particular socket i need to 
in my console, I need to get a message that someone logged into the port. So I can tell that someone logged into port 3000. So that would be better. Okay. So then I initialize that uh, the port number that will be using is called as 3000. So port and socket can be considered the same, but port has a number. So you can consider uh, both things as same. So then you have not, nothing but console.log. Uh, listening to port 3000. This is the one by default will print. So after I go to this 3000 uh, port, so it will print this message. So to get a better understanding, we'll save this uh, program. So what we'll do is we'll try to run this. So after running, so it is telling that I am listening to port number 3000, but I need to get this message, right? Someone logged into port 3000. So how do I log into port 3000 is pretty simple. I'll open Chrome. So after pro opening Chrome, I will use localhost 3000. So this is the localhost 3000. So once I logged into this or once I tried connecting with that, so it should tell me that I have someone logged into port 3000. So it is telling me that someone logged into port 3000. So how many hours I keep on, uh, how many hour times I keep on trying to log into port 3000. So it is telling me that I am logging into port 3000. So this is how it is working. I created a server. So I also created a simple connection uh, using the socket. So this socket number is 3000. So that is telling me which is the port number I'm trying to get connected to. So after I try to connect to this port, it will print a console message stating that someone logged into port 3000. So pretty cool uh, to start with. I mean, to use this simple application. So we'll just close it. Close the browser. So if I, if you are stuck in this, you need to use control plus C. So if you use control plus C, it will come out of the program and it will come to your normal CMD. So very important control C to come out of the constantly running program. So after doing this, we have some more small things that is left out. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is, See, most of the things that we try to do is we are just sending out some requests to the server and also we are trying to uh, receive some information back. So most of the information, uh, most of the times we, we are just trying to connect to the server here. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to request some message to the server as well as post some message to the respect using the server. So it is nothing but request and reply package. So what we are doing is we'll create uh, using this server. So what we'll do is we'll use request comma result. So that is the thing that we'll use. So what we'll do is we'll not end this function. So we'll use this uh, shorthand operator. So that is taking in the arguments request and uh, result. So this is a function here. So in this function, what we'll try to do is if we'll try to send some messages basically. So if request dot URL, so that is the request dot URL is double equal to that is the default URL. So then what we'll try to do is we'll try to write some information request dot write. Hello. Uh, Okay, I'll write welcome to home. Okay, so this is the thing that I'll write. So then what I'll do is, I will try to use the other URL also. Request.URL is double equal to slash block. So then what will happen is I will use this function that is, I will also write Okay, one thing is after you writing something, I need to end this request also. I will write. Welcome to block. So then I will also use. Okay, after request, so I need to use this as result. Right? So this is result. So request is, I will, I'll explain the whole code to you. So this is nothing but the result because after requesting, I need to do some resultant activity or reply. Okay. So then I close this particular thing. If loop, then this, so I need to tell which 
port we are using so i will use this 3000 port only so then i will print that console statement okay so now what i am doing particularly here is i created a server guys so in my previous program what i did was i just created a server and whenever i logged into that particular server that is into the particular socket or port it try to print out some statements but majority of the server so why do you need to create servers is whenever a request come to the server you need to reply back to that server for example whenever i type in www.google.com so it is a request being sent via the url so whenever i send a url request to the server it must reply me back with what that is the home page of google for example so this is always it is happening so i will type in www.google.com so this is the request that i am sending so it is fetching back the results that is this home page along with the search button that that is this html page that it is fetching me back so similarly when i have created a server so request is nothing but the url so whenever i go and type in uh, localhost.3000 so that is the request being sent so what is the reply that i need to give so whenever i request the base so slash is meaning that whenever i request the uh, base url so what is the base url localhost colon 3000 is the base url so it must print in the, it must uh, reply back telling that welcome to home and it should end the reply so similarly when i whenever i request the url uh whenever i request the url slash block so whenever i request localhost slash block so that is another url so it must reply me back with the information welcome to the block and then it should end so this is the basic thing that i am doing whenever i creating a server so i am using this request and reply that is the argument and the function is nothing but whenever it finds out the base url it whenever i try to log into the base url or request the base url it should reply back telling that welcome to home so whenever i go to another url that is base url slash block it should reply back with welcome to the block and it should end the request here i am telling that server dot listen is nothing but the port number 3000 is the like the server socket it needs to listen to then i also will print out console dot log port 3000 just to ensure that my program is running so i hope you have understood it is nothing but a request and a reply this is similar to a function so instead of function i told you how to use a short and a uh, way to use a function it is equal to and then you have using a uh, greater than symbol so all this import i mean the steps of this function are being written here then closing this function then closing this a uh, particular uh, function to create server here so then semicolon then i am telling which port to listen to and console dot log i'll save this here so then i'll try, try to run this code okay which mal formed arrow function parameter list one second okay the error is i need to open the function here so if i open the function here i can close this okay so the main thing was i need to open this function here with i didn't open the function at all okay it is printing out port 3000 so if i go to local host 3000 so what should me what should it reply back welcome to home so why it is replying back so i created a server with two parameters request and result that is also reply so when i request the particular url base url is nothing but it is also similar to local host 3000 so this is the url so it so it is similar to that it is a base url so this is similar to local host uh 3000 slash block so it is by default it will take as the local host 3000 as the default uh, url so then uh, you are telling that uh, it should reply with welcome home whenever whenever i call this particular url it should reply back with that is welcome to block so server dot listen 3000 is nothing but i am telling the server to listen to 3000 port where that is the port that i have initialized so then it is printing out so if i go to localhost 3000 welcome to home slash block so slash block so it will go to welcome to block so this is the simple server that we try to create using uh, that is our http request so simple thing was in last time we just created the server without request and reply now we have created a request and reply which will which will take in the request from the 
server that is request from the particular server by uh, how is the request being taken if you go to the url that is considered as the request whenever a request is taken so then it will try to reply back with these particular uh, statements that we have written so simple thing to understand 